Real world graphs often span large number of nodes and interaction between them. Large graph comparison are usually computationally hard due to the MP-completeness of the underlying subgraph isomorphism problem. Thus, graph comparison rely on easily computable heuristic called graph properties. Graph properties will give an overall view of the network but might not be detailed enough to capture complex topological characteristics of large networks. Here, in this section, we review some of the most popular properties of a graph. Later, you will learn alternative ways to compare and analyze graphs. As you recall, the degree of a node refers to the number of edges incident to the node. Now, if we average the degrees over all nodes in the graph, we have a global measure for the whole system. Let PK be the percentage of nodes of degree K in the network. The degree distribution is the distribution of PK over all K. Much of the recent research on the structure of biological networks and other real networks has focused on determining the form of their degree distributions. However, degree distributions are weak predictors of network structure. For instance, G1 and G2 are of the same size and the same degree distribution, but they may have very different topologies. Clustering coefficients were introduced by Watts and Strobatz in 1998 as a way to measure how close a node or a vertex and its neighbors are from being a complete subgraph. Formally, clustering coefficient CV of a node V is equal to the number of edges in the neighborhood of V over maximum possible number of edges in the neighborhood of V. For vertex V of degree 0 or 1, by definition CV equals to 0. The clustering coefficient for the entire system is the average of the clustering coefficient over all nodes in the network. Clustering coefficient CV is between 0 and 1 and can be viewed as the probability that two neighbors of V are connected. In a highly clustered network, the neighbors of a given nodes are very likely to be themselves linked by an edge. Clustering spectrum is the distribution of the average of clustering coefficients of all nodes of degree k in the network over all k. Consider this adjacency matrix. The possible number of connections in this matrix is 6, and the clustering coefficient for v1 and v2 is 2 over 3. Node v3 and v4 each has a clustering coefficient of 1 over 3, so the average of those four clustering coefficients is 0 0.5. Typically, the first step in studying the clustering and modular properties of a network is to calculate its average clustering coefficient and its distribution. It has been shown that the clustering coefficients of the metabolic network was at least an order of magnitude higher than that of the corresponding random network. The distance between two nodes is the smallest number of links that have to be traversed to get from one node to the other. The path that achieves that distance is called shortest path. The average network diameter is the average of shortest path lengths over all pairs of nodes in a network. So, as an alternative way, one can represent a graph using distance between its nodes called distance matrix, where each element dij is the distance between node i and node j. For instance, in this graph, the shortest way to go from node 1 to node 5 travels along 3 links, so d15 equals 3. For the same graph, if we average over all shortest path lengths, we have average network diameter. In a sense, the average path length in a network is an indicator of how readily information can be transmitted through it. In biological network, it has been observed that only a small number of intermediate steps are necessary for any of protein, gene, metabolites 
to influence the characteristic or behavior of another. We often have reason to believe that element at the center of every system are very important. The problem of identifying the most important nodes in a large complex network is of fundamental importance in a number of application areas, including biology, communication, sociology, and management. To date, several measures have been devised for ranking the nodes in a complex network and quantifying their relative importance. For instance, Centrality measure has been used to predict essentiality of a gene or protein based on network topology. A gene or protein is said to be essential for an organism if an organism cannot survive without it. In this section, we describe three standard centrality measures that capture a wide range of importance in a network, degree, closeness, and betweenness. The most intuitive notation of centrality focuses on degree. Nodes with a large number of neighbors have high centrality. Therefore, we have degree centrality, CD of V equals to degree of V. Node with significant higher degree called hub nodes. The removal of these hub nodes has a far greater impact on the topology and connectedness of the network than the removal of a node of low degree. Degree centrality, however, can be deceiving because it is a purely local measure. A second measure of centrality is closeness centrality. A node is considered important if it is relatively close to all other nodes. Closeness centrality is defined in terms of the geodesic distance between nodes in a graph or network. Nodes with short paths to all other nodes in the network have high closeness centrality. Closeness of a node, formally defined as the inverse of the summation of distance of each node to every other node in the network. Last but not least, we introduce betweenness centrality. Freeman in 1978 introduced the concept of betweenness centrality as a means of quantifying an individual's influence within a social network. The idea behind this centrality measure is an important node will lie on a high proportion of a path between other nodes in a graph. Formally, betweenness centrality counts the number of shortest paths between i and k that node j resides on. Consider this graph. As you can see, based on different centrality measure, different nodes are important. D has the highest degree centrality, F and G have the highest closeness centrality, and H has highest betweenness centrality. Eigenvalues are a special set of scholars associated with a matrix. The determination of the eigenvalue and eigenvector of a system is extremely important in physics and engineering. Each eigenvalue is paired with a corresponding so-called eigenvector. 
To obtain the eigenvalues, we should solve the equation a nu equal lambda nu. Lambda is eigenvalue and nu is eigenvector. If we solve this equation for adjacency matrix of a graph, then we have eigenvalue assigned to that graph. The set of all such scholars is called graph spectrum or graph spectra. However, in physics, the set of eigenvalues of a Laplacian matrix of a graph is called graph spectra. Graph Laplacian, denoted by L, is constructed by subtracting degree from adjacency matrix. The smallest eigenvalue of L is zero. The corresponding eigenvector is the constant one vector. And L has n non-negative real-valued eigenvalues. Two graphs are called co-spectral if their adjacency matrices have equal multiset of eigenvalues. Co-spectral graph does not need to be isomorphic, but isomorphic graphs are always co-spectral. Here is an example of two co-spectral graphs. The final aspect of network structure, which we shall discuss here, is concerned with small topological patterns. Milo and others showed that networks from diverse fields, biological and non-biological, contain several small topological patterns that are so frequent that it is unlikely to occur by chance. Moreover, different networks tend to have different sets of such frequent local structures. These patterns, referred to as network motifs, are recognized as the simple building block of complex network. An algorithm for finding n-node network motifs goes as follows. First, find all n-node circuits in the real graph. For example, there are 13 3-node subgraphs, 199 4-node subgraphs, and so on. Then, find all n-node subgraphs in a set of randomized graphs with the same distribution of incoming and outgoing arrows. Finally, assign p-value probability for any one of the n-node subgraphs to occur more at random than in the real graph. So, a network motif is a small overrepresented partial subgraph of real network. Here, overrepresented means that it is overrepresented when compared to network coming from a random graph model. But what is expected at random? I mean, which network null model to use to identify motifs? <laughs>